Hey everyone, it's, uh, Joe Lines here with Jean Alain from QAP, and today we have a really—it's a bit more complex, but of course, with complexity comes you know great great strengths, right? Uh, we're going to show how I didn't know this until just just a few minutes ago. With QAP, you can actually tell it to look at a selected file from like your whatever file explorer you're using, um, and then you know pass parameters to it or do something with it. So John's going to walk us through that, and I think we're going to try to make it work on one of my my tools. So. Let's yeah, understand. yeah, we'll, we'll see at the end of the video if, if you are a good student. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, first, just you explain what it is, but it's, it, it's of course m easier when you see it in action. So let me share my screen to show you. I have in this menu here four favorites that are application favorites. So they are running the command line with a parameter that is called cell lock. So this is a placeholder. So let me show an example of that. So if, for example, I click here, the department folder and select this command, it will show a directory of the files inside this department folder. I can run exactly the same command on the client folder and it will show the content of this folder. So the Command here will act the same way, but on the content that I select first before opening the quick access pop-up menu. If you want to see how it is done here, it is an application favorite. The command here is CMD, you know, the command line. It could be uh, different ways to call this uh, command, but it will, it will open a window where you could type commands. But instead of typing command, you will pass here under the advanced settings, in the parameter section, you will pass here the command that you want to be executed by the CMD uh, window. And this, so slash K is to say execute this command. The command is dir, so directory. And here, instead of typing the directory, you type cell lock, which will be replaced by the selected location. So the selected file or folder that you will click before asking for this command. And it's not always necessary, but it's a good thing to put this between double quotes because as soon as a location would include a space, you would make sure that the location is fully considered uh, in the command. So putting it between double quotes will uh, make it work in every situation. So that's how it works. So it will uh, simply take this. So here we have the content of a very large folder that has been displayed because it was selected. So it can be used for various things. Another example here is still using the command is to copy the selected file. So if I take this file here, lorem, and I say copy the selected file, it will create a copy here of the file with uh, an extension that I had uh, just to distinguish the original and the copy, but this is the same file that has been copied. The way it was done here in the advanced setting is the added to the CMD command in the parameter is slash C, copy, then the name of the original file, cell lock, which will be replaced by the full path and name of the selected file and copy it to the selected location. So the same location here, but adding here an extension that would make it different. And I'm also using another placeholder that we've seen in another video that is a date time placeholder. So it's the now placeholder that will replace, will be replaced by the date year, month, day. So that's what you have here, 2021 0617, which is today's date. So that's the way you can combine these different uh, things. There's a third one here. I won't go in every detail here, but just to show here that you could also uh, use the selected directory here in the start in folder, the start in, uh, start in option. So it will start your command line in this directory, the selected directory, the directory I am in, and it will send the cell lock uh, parameters. Now let's see the result of this uh, command. So here I click on the folder, the department folder, and it will show here in the command window that the current folder is document. So the folder I am in here is my documents folder. And the selected item that I clicked was the department subfolders, which is the current, uh, the content of the parameter. So, so that's things that you can combine. In this case, they are used by a batch file. 
So that's the batch file here that was running. And this batch file was echoing here the current folder using the CD command and echoing here the selected file, which is the parameter percentage one that was passed as a parameter. So there are very uh, various ways that you can use and combine these things. It can also be used in a snippet. For example, if I have a text file here, and if I need to insert the full path of a file or the name of a file in this, so I can here select, I will use this file name here. So I click here. It tells me now open the lorem file and select the insertion point and press enter and it will put the snippet in this location. And this snippet, what it is doing is it types the file, uh, double quotes, and the selected name, the name of the selected file is selected. That's what we got here. So th th these are various ways that these placeholders can be used. Of course, you will need some uh, help doing that. Uh, you can go on the Quick Access pop-up website. And if you see here, there's a placeholder L page that will uh, open this page on the quick access pop-up website. Where is it? No, it's not the one open now. So, but- um, Put the URL in the video, yeah. Yeah, you do that. So um, now, Joe, are now, you ready to on. try to do your first- uh... One thing I want you to explain, because it really helped me when we were talking about this a little bit. The preview, like the mail merge preview kind of thing is the way I think about it, because yeah, it, it's a really good preview. thing to help you understand. Yeah, like what you're doing, yeah. are you doing the right well, thing? Because if it's not updating, yeah. Yeah. So if there's nothing here, let me just cut this. So there's no preview here because there's no placeholder. As soon as you insert a placeholder, so placeholders are always starting with the curly bracket and closing with the curly bracket. As soon as you type something that will be recognized as a placeholder, it will be here replaced by selected file or folders. If I type selected cell dir, dir, it will be replaced with the containing folder. So the folder containing the item, item that is selected. So you can have various placeholders here and have them being previewed. Oops, there we go. Um, so here is the extension of the file that would be uh, also uh, previewed here. So that's, um, that's a way, in fact, to make sure that you type something correctly. If you, by mistake, if you type uh, 2i here, it will not be recognized as a placeholder. You have to have it really typed exactly as, uh, as it needs to be to be replaced here. And, and I don't know if you've tried this, but something that, that's helped me when I'm working with AutoHockey in the command prompt um, is putting the backslash echo instead of like the backslash C, C or K, which I saw you using, that will echo the command to the command prompt instead of running it. And so it gives you a real world, this is what you actually submitted. And so it's a great way to go, hey, you know, is this really what I wanted? And then you can actually copy it and paste yeah. it into a command prompt, but it, it's a yeah. great, easy way. There's a kind of process and each person can have its own way to develop something and make sure it works. But yes, it, and it requires some trial and error before it works. You yeah. don't get it the first time. So uh, you have to test it. And then after some time, you will have something working that will make you save much more time than the time you, you invested in, in creating these type of favorites. So Joe, are you ready now to yeah. test it on your side? I know you process a lot of video files and I think it's the kind of uh, usage that could be very uh, interesting for you. Right, yeah, I know we, we talked about using FFmpeg. And FFmpeg is a free tool. Let me share my desktop here. I have a couple examples here of th this is just, it doesn't really matter what it is, a video file. Now, this video file, the A here, I created with OBS, uh, this is a quick record. And what's amazing is if you just run it through FFmpeg without any parameters other than just submitting it to it, it'll often cut the file size in half. So especially like some of these videos I download from Zoom, they're like a gig and I wanna upload them to YouTube, but I don't wanna upload a gig, especially out here, it takes so long. So this cuts it in half, shrink it way down. It's really cool. So I, I use it a lot. And I have a, an auto hotkey script that does this, but we were chatting earlier of like, okay, how would we do this with QAP instead? So basically, I think Jean was demonstrating here it helps you, but 
you can select a file and then tell QAP to do something to that file, right? And one thing I was going to mention, John, in your video, you were selecting the file, going to your QAP menu, finding the thing, clicking it. But in reality, of course, if this is something you do a lot, which of course, that's the only time you probably do something like this and something you do a lot, is you'd assign a hotkey to that darn thing, right? So you could select the file and hit your hotkey and it would have dumped in that path into your Word doc or whatever it is you're working on, right? That, that to me, I know for our demo purposes, we're not doing it, but in reality, that's how you'd be using it. And that's where you go, wow, this is a huge time saver, right? Let's go ahead and start adapting this now. I'm going to bring up QAP. And then here you can even see I have a whole menu of stuff I do with FFmpeg um, customized. And, and I was playing around here. Now, the first thing I think you and I both agree we do is build the basics without doing the placeholders, right? Let's just make sure we submit it the way you would if you were not dynamically doing it, you were just doing it for this file. So you give it a name, actually FFmpeg proc, proc, I'll call it. Here's the path to the executable that you're gonna submit it to. And then go to advanced menus. And here, this, which uh, bring this over here, there we go. So this is, the, this is what we're looking at. Well, in reality, it's just this part. These are the parameters, right? So the dash I, a dot MP4, and, a, and then a new name, because I wanna, this is the file I'm gonna submit. This is the new file because you got to give it a new name. Otherwise, it would just overwrite it. And then we're kind of out of luck because uh, it's just done. But what we're going to give it, we're, we're, what we're going to convert it to. And you'll see there's no a underscore shrink dot mp4 here. So I'm going to hit OK, save. And now I'm going to select a and ffmpeg and ffmpeg proc. Darn it. So let's go look at what uh, what was wrong with that FFmpeg. Oh, I got it. Sorry, wrong thing. It's here. FFmpeg. Boy, I don't know what why that yeah, didn't. Yeah, uh, dash. It worked. <laughs> AMP4. No full temp. Full pat. Oh, C temp. You. Yeah. And twice, right? Because I need it here. Yeah. And here. There we go. Good catch. Save. Now, and again, I'm going to select this just because it's out of habit. But right now, it's it. We're forcing that full path, so I don't really have to select it. Right. Um, FFmpeg, FFmpeg proc. There we go. And now it just ran. It created this file. And look, it actually it like shrunk it in half. Um, but it's really almost like the same kind of quality. So anyway, now the question, of course, is how do we convert this bad boy over to be dynamic? So I can I can just select any file and do this. And so we're only dealing with this. So there's the C. And this is what was it? The, the curly braces, right? So I'm going to put my curly braces here. And that's... So, S-E-L underscore. Location, name. lock. Lock. Okay. It would be the full path of the file, including the file name and the extension. Okay. So location. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then we want to, like, I'm going to be leaving. I'm going to leave this over here for now. So first we want the directory, right? So. Yeah. Is it S-E-L directory? S-E-L D-I-R? Yeah. D-R-R. Yes, so it will be replaced by the, by the directory where you, the file is. And then this A, uh, obviously we don't want it to always be A, so I want this to be replaced. The name of the, ori of the original yeah. file. So, and, and what that's... Without uh, the extension, so it's no EXT, yeah. So that no. way it will use okay. only A in the, the example we have, right. so the file itself without its extension. And with, I think... And we'd allow you to add shrink to it. Shrink. Oh, and, and now here, actually. Maybe you could keep it be before because you would always use it on MP4 well, file. But if you do the same with a move file or something else, so you could use cell underscore EXT to use the extension of the no, file but, you selected. Yeah, and, and this is a little off topic, but I actually have been able to convert like MOVs and FLVs and stuff and, and I always want an MP4, so I am going to leave this just because I'm going to end up using this thing in reality. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to leave it as is, right? But um, but I, I get your point. If, if I wanted to borrow the extension, I could dynamically do that. So let's go yeah. ahead and hit OK. Save and close. Actually, I shouldn't close it, but it doesn't matter. 
All right, so so now I have my file selected. We're gonna do FFM big proc and cross our fingers. There it goes. It ran. Now yes, that's awesome. Nice. Theoretically, I can select another file, right? FFM big proc. And there we go. Now to my point earlier, I'm gonna come in here and say, you know what? I'm gonna be using this thing a lot. So I'm going to assign a hotkey. So now control shift F, there we go. And I don't even have to pull that up, right? And to me, yeah. that is just, all you have to do is to make sure that the file, the selected file is the one you want to, to convert. Yeah. yeah, very, very, very cool. good. So, so you're awesome. a very good student, Joe. Ah, Congrats. Is, <laughs> now, again, this is just an example using FFmpeg, right? But there's probably a lot of things you might want to do depending on what you're doing. And let, let's say, I know earlier we kind of discussed some people might want to. There's things you can do with your context menu and Explorer and sending things to it. And it's 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 more complicated than this, right? And it's also usually not dynamic, right? That yeah, this yeah. brings that dynamic. I, I can react and do something yeah. to what I have selected. That's very cool. Yeah, it replaced what you would do with the context menu, but with much more flexibility. And I can imagine users like system administrator or user that install software. They have things to repeat. They are using batches, mm -hmm. and they can make their batches much more flexible using this type of uh, placeholders. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jean. That was yeah, very cool. My pleasure. Thanks to you. Bye. Thanks for watching that tutorial on Quick Access Pop-Up. From time to time, we have discounts here at The Automator. It just depends on when you watch this video. So if you go to this above link here, The Automator slash QAP discount, um, you can see if there's a discount available. If not, it's still a very reasonably priced program. Go ahead and go down to shop.quickaccesspopup.com and see what the pricing is. It's a great, great tool. I highly recommend it. Cheers.